All right, guys. Today we are going to do a modification on the 8600 Pro, the Godox 8600 Pro. A lot of people have been having issues with this mechanism for not being strong enough to hold the larger modifiers. Not just for this, uh, it's similarly for the 8300, 8400 Pro. So I've actually modified this earlier, about two weeks ago. Uh, if you can see this, I've changed this into a rubber gasket. And so far I've tested this and it works fine for my, I think it's a 120cm modifier. The difference between this and this is basically that this is actually a hard, very very hard gasket with the rubber gasket you can actually over crank it this way you can tighten it to hold much larger modifiers when you need it to do so step one this is what you do basically you well <laughs> turn the handle until it comes off as a copper piece make sure you keep that safely somewhere okay and turn your mechanism or the or the holder this way and we'll take a look there are small little screw holes here these are not conventional screws you have to get a uh, appropriate allen key to open this basically you remove one two three four because right now it's sitting securely inside. You can see that you cannot actually remove this handle here. Before we continue, let's look at the tools that you require. A box cutter, the Allen key to remove the screws, and uh, this is a bit special, something to mark on rubber. This is a so-called silver marking pen for leather crafting and, and fabric work. Not sure if you can get this, but I would say a normal pen would work as well. Now you take the Allen key and remove these screws. You don't really have to remove them completely, just loosen them enough that they come out maybe about a couple of one or one or two cm make sure you unscrew all four of them up to about the same height once you're quite certain that you have loosened them as much as you can try to be gentle because this switch here okay before we continue let's not talk about the switch remove the battery make sure your battery is not Now, pull on it slightly. You'll see that now you're able to pull this up a little bit. Don't pull on it too hard because there's actually a wire inside for the battery. Okay, pull on it just enough by holding the back with your fingers. Pull until you can remove this part okay now it is removed you can put it back gently and you rotate this slightly so that you can remove this blue gasket okay now the gasket is out next step you will need some industrial grade rubber preferably around 3mm thick cut a piece out roughly of the same shape okay mark this
doesn't have to be perfect okay do note that the inside the interior of this gasket if you look at this the hole itself has grooves on the side make sure you mark those as well it's rubber so it's quite forgiving next up get your box cutter you can use the original gasket as kind of a template oh you should do it on a cutting mat but I'm not using a cutting mat so that it's easier to show in a video Okay. Or you can do it freehand, <laughs> like what I prefer. Doesn't need to be perfect, like I said. So I'll just be careful that you make sure you don't cut your own fingers. Okay, roughly. And then next step, need one more tool. So how do you make a hole? I have a drive punch, so I'm going to use that. But for you, uh, it can be anything. It can You can use a box cutter, you can... All right, I admit I've actually forgotten to talk about drive punches. Okay, these are ideal in making holes in all kinds of things. Uh, cloth, rubber, and for my case, they're actually for leather. So there are various sizes for the drive punches. Um, you will need a, basically a poly board so that you place the item on top and you punch onto the punching board so as to not to damage the tool. And of course, besides the drive punch, you need a poly mallet. Couple knocks. You have a hole. So, next step is to cut out the grooves. Be really careful when you do so. Okay, that's one side done. Both sides done. Now, Yep. Make sure that these wings are able to move slightly with the rotation. Okay, this is fine now, but let's make this better or perfect. What I would recommend that you do is make sure that you trim off the excess as much as you can before you actually install it. It's okay if it's slightly smaller. Of course, the larger the area, the more the friction it's going to be and the stronger the mechanism will be to hold the larger modifiers. Okay. Now you can reinsert this and you see, ah, okay, it rotates freely inside. Okay, now you just reinstall everything. Okay, make sure you insert the silvery side facing in, not out. It's reinserted. Now make sure that everything is flat and flush. Okay, now all you need to do is to take your Allen key and tighten the four screws that you have loosened initially. Okay, now everything is back in uh, its original position. The moment of proof. 
Okay. No strange sounds. Yep, it works. Yep. So the modification is done. That's it. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you like the video or if you learn anything. Leave a comment if you have any questions. Basically, I'm going to put this to test and I hope it works.